reinforcement bar for retaining wall. The design of retaining wall is similar to the design of a slab. It is normally designed on the basis of 1 meter width. The main steel bar is provided along its height, while the secondary steel bar is in the transverse directions. The main steel bar is normally provided at the outer layer of reinforcement in order to give the maximum lever arm for a higher moment resistance. Due to large effective cross-sectional area, the compression reinforcements are normally not required. With that, the calculations to determine the amount of reinforcement bar for the retaining wall is rather straightforward. First, you need to determine the care factor by dividing the moment with FCK and the B and the depth of the reinforced concrete retaining wall. Substitute the K into the equations for the lever arm. Check when it is less than 0.95D. If the lever arm Z is more than 0.95D, 0.95D is used. Next, substitute the Z into the equations for the AS. The required amount of reinforcement bar needs to be at least greater than the minimum required reinforcement bar. As for the transverse or secondary reinforcement, the provided reinforcement bar amount needs to be at least greater than the amount of the minimum area of reinforcement bar. The minimum amount of reinforcement bar can be determined by using these two equations. These equations can be obtained from clause 9.2.1.1 in Eurocode. The FCTM can be obtained from table 3.1 of Eurocode 2 part 1. The equations is given here. It is meant for the concrete lower than 50 MPa grade. For different grade of concrete, the ratios to determine the minimum amount of reinforcement bar differ. The amount of minimum reinforcement bar provided must be greater than these two areas. The maximum amount of reinforcement bar is determined by 4% of the cross-sectional area of the retaining wall. Similar to the slab, a retaining wall normally do not require shear reinforcement. This is mainly attributed to relatively large cross-sectional area of the retaining wall with respect to the load acting on it. For that, you need to check the shear load against the shear resistance of the concrete without any shear reinforcement. The equations to determine the shear resistance of the concrete is given here. It is in the function of K and also in the functions of rho 1, which represent the amount of reinforcement bar. The shear resistance of the concrete should theoretically be greater than the minimum resistance of the concrete. When the shear resistance of the concrete is greater than the shear loads, that means no shear reinforcement is required and the cross sections of the retaining wall is satisfactory in resisting the shear load. Next, we need to check for serviceability of the retaining wall, particularly in terms of the maximum spacing of reinforcement bar in controlling the cracking. For the retaining wall less than 200 mm thickness, 
the principle of maximum spacing for the slab is applicable. The maximum spacing between the main reinforcement bar is limited by 3H, that means the thickness of the reinforced concrete retaining wall, and also the 400 mm. As for the secondary reinforcement, the maximum spacing is limited by the 3.5H or 450mm. However, for the wall thickness greater than 200mm, table 7.3N of Eurocode is to be referred. From the table here, there is a series of stresses in comparison with the crack conditions of 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 mm limit. The crack width limit is governed by the type of exposures of concrete which can be referred to table 7.1 n. The retaining wall is always exposed to the groundwater and therefore normally it is considered as the category X2 and the category XC2 it will be considered for the crack width limit of 0.3 mm. First, you need to determine the stress of the reinforcement in the retaining wall. This equation is used. The stress is basically calculated by the specified yield strength divided by factor of safety multiply the ratio of the quasi-permanent loads to the ultimate load. It is normally assumed that the factor of distribution equals to 1. 